Welcome back. In this main lesson, we are going to learn about several quantities from statistics. It's going to be the expectation value or the mean value of a random variable, the variance of a random variable, and the covariance of two random variables. Let's start with the mean value, which is also called the expectation value of a random variable and we are going to denote it by capital E. Let me explain the concept of the expectation value on an example. Let's take the example of the distance between two collisions. We have a distance and then we have a, the probability density function. We already know that this random variable has the form of the exponential function, the probability of collision decreases exponentially with the distance. From this function it may look like the most probable site to see the next collision is at the point of the previous collision, right? Right here. The probability density function has the highest value at the distance 0 cm. Now that's true, however that doesn't mean that you will see any collision at that point. If you, for instance, calculate the probability that the next collision would occur within this distance 0 and 1 cm, you integrate this density function, you would find out that the probability is very small. And most of the collisions would occur in a distance greater than one centimeter in this example. We are almost never interested in uh, what is the most probable value of the random variable. We are on the contrary interested in the most typical value, the mean value that we call the expectation value. If we know the probability density function of the random variable, then we can easily calculate the expectation value according to this formula. We basically integrate over the values of the random variable and we use the probability density function as the weighting factor. So in our example, the shorter distances will have bigger weight than the longer distances when calculating the expectation value. So let's calculate the expectation value for our example. So we are going to integrate the random variable, so that is the distance s, multiplied by the probability density function. So in our case, that is the product of the macroscopic cross-section, the total macroscopic cross-section, and the exponential function with the exponent minus sigma t s. So we are going to integrate this over the distance from 0 to infinity. You can see that in our definition we have the lower limit set to minus infinity. Uh, we, we write 0 here because our probability density function is defined for non-negative uh, distances only. This integral is quite simple to calculate. We can introduce a substitution, for instance uh, a new variable y I can uh, define as s sigma t. So dy equals sigma t ds. So we can rewrite the integral as y times the exponential function with the exponent minus y times dy divided by sigma t. Now this integral here equals 1 so the whole formula equals 1 over sigma t. 
So from here you can see that the physical meaning of the value 1 over sigma t is the expected distance between two neutron collisions. And therefore the sigma t has a physical meaning of the expected number of collisions per unit distance. In a similar way the expectation value is also defined for discrete random variables. The expectation value in this case is simply calculated by summing up the values of the random variable with the weighting factors uh, equal to the probabilities associated with the uh, values of the random variable. Another important quantity is the variance that we denote by var. It is the expected quadratic deviation from the expectation value. Let's try to understand this by an example. Let's take the distance between collisions S and its probability density function Fs. We know now that the mean distance to the next collision has a value 1 over sigma t, where sigma t is the total macroscopic cross section. So during the simulation of the neutron transport by the Monte Carlo method, the distance to the next collision will be sampled around this value. So for instance, one distance will fall shorter than the mean distance. Uh, another time the distance will be sampled longer. So when we calculate the variance of the random variable, we are interested in these differences between the chosen distance and the expected distance. The variance of the random variable denotes the expected quadratic deviation from the expectation value. So we are interested in the squares, or the difference between the actual sample distance and the mean value. So when we, ch when we have chosen this distance, then the square is here. When we have chosen the shorter distance here, we can draw another square, a smaller one. So imagine you calculate the area of the square for each selected distance, and then you calculate the mean value of this area for all the sample distances. Formally, the variance of the random variable is defined by this equation. You can see here the square of the difference between the random variable and its expectation value. And then we are taking the expectation value of these squares. Let's try to calculate the variance for our example, the distance between two collisions. So here we would calculate the expectation value of square of the distance s minus the expectation mm, distance 1 over sigma t squared. So from the definition of the expectation value we calculate it as the integral from 0 to infinity s minus 1 over sigma t and now we have to weight this number by the probability density function sigma t e to the power of minus sigma t s the s. Now if you try to calculate this integral you will find out that the value is 1 over sigma t squared. So this is the variance for the distance to the next collision. When you look at the definition of the variance by this equation, you may notice that 
and this term inside can be expanded. You can multiply each term with each one to obtain this form. Now we can break these brackets into three separate terms. So the middle term would be the expectation value of 2x expectation value of x. Now you can see that the expectation value of x is a constant and it can be taken out. So we can write this as a 2 times expectation value of x times the expectation value of x which equals this term. And now you can see that the middle term and the last one can be combined. So, so this is the final form for the variance. It's incredibly useful to use this definition for the variance. We are going to use it later when we calculate variance in our results because it will allow us to calculate the variance without knowing the expectation value in the result beforehand. So in this case the variance is calculated as the expectation value of the square of the random variable minus the square of the expectation value of the random variable. Now you may have noticed that the expectation value of a random variable and its variance have different units. We use the variance in order to express the amount of spread in the random variable around its expectation value. And we want to measure this spread in the same unit in which we calculate the expectation value. So for this reason we also define the so-called standard deviation which is simply the square root of the variance of the random variable. The standard deviation, we denote it by sigma, is the same unit as the random variable and its expectation value. So we often use this one. And finally, let's define the covariance of two random variables. The covariance we are going to need when we learn about the so-called variance reduction techniques. It is a quantity which expresses the relation between two variables. So in case two random variables are positively correlated, the covariance is positive and it may be a large number. When two random variables are not correlated at all, then the covariance of these random variables is zero. And this term can also be negative in case the variables are negatively correlated. Here is the formal definition of the covariance of two random variables. You can see it is the expectation value of a product of two values the first value is the difference of the first random variable and its expectation value. And the second value is the difference of the second random variable and the expectation value of the second variable. So in case the covariance is positive, the two random variables are positively correlated. That means they both are likely to give the value above or below their respective expectation value. So when the first random variable give the value above its expectation value, then the second variable is also likely to give the value above its expectation value. As you may guess, when the covariance term is negative, the two random variables are negatively correlated. That means when the first variable gives a value below its expectation value, 
then the second variable is likely to give a value above its expectation value. And an example of quantities that are not correlated could be the energy of fission neutron and its direction from the fission reaction. If you calculate it, the covariance term for these two quantities, you would find out that it is zero. Similarly, as we simplify the equation for the variance in the previous slide, we can also simplify the equation for the covariance term. We just expand these two brackets here and combine the corresponding terms. So eventually we get this form for the covariance, which may be very useful to us later. Now you made it till the end, so that's all.